Welcome to Scoliosis Dialogues, an SRS podcast. Today's episode is an excerpt from the SRS Research Grant Outcome Symposium, which was held on March 5th, 2022. So at this point, uh, we are going to transition uh, we're to uh, a presentation from Dr. Lafage. So uh, Dr. Uh, Lafage is our uh, former chair of the Research Grants Committee, and she has a wealth of knowledge of the different types of funding that are available through the Scoliosis Research Society. Um, so it, sometimes it, it, there, it's, it's a well-kept se- secret of what all the opportunities are out there for people to apply for. So I will turn this over to Dr. Lafage, and then afterward, um, we will switch moderators, uh, and I'll introduce my colleague, Dr. Castellane. So Dr. Lafage. Thank you very much, Dr. Weiss. Um, so today I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about the different grant that you can apply to, to the SRS. And I'm going to spend a little bit more time on the smaller grant because we tend to ignore them and we really think that they're extremely valuable. So before jumping on the different grant category, uh, this is a snapshot of what happened uh, between 2012 and 2019. So just over like eight years, uh, 75 grants were awarded, which represent about like 2.1 million. Uh, and the interesting part is that they were awarded like in nine different countries over three continents. So the SRS is really like a, a, global, uh, a global effort. Uh, from an academic productivity, we have like more than 100 presentation, about like 30 SRS or IMAS presentation, including like two uh, IPS uh, winners. Um, 76 potential manuscripts, you know, not all of them have been uh, published yet. And I would say like probably a lot of collaboration. This is something that we cannot really measure, uh, but just looking at the chat from, uh, from today webinar, we can see like some uh, collaboration starting like to, to take place. So uh, if there is any topic that you are interested on, uh, about and you see a presentation today, please reach out to the presenter, please reach out to us. Like this is a forum where we, we want uh, everybody to collaborate. So let's talk about like the different type of grant. So there is six different type of grant. And basically we can group them in two categories. The first category is what we call the two-step grant in the sense that you first have to submit a letter of intent. And if your letter of intent is accepted, then you will be invited to submit a full submission. The general guideline is that you actually don't need to be an SRS member as long as you have a co-PI that is an SRS member. Um, There is no uh, restriction from an age point of view, except for the Biderman category, which is uh, uh, specific for young member. So uh, the letter of intent is very straightforward. And very often we think that, you know, letter of intent is just two page. So we can see that when we read them, that sometimes people just wait the last minute and throw together a letter of intent. Uh, When you have to write something that is very short, it's actually more complicated. It actually takes more time. So really, uh, my advice, like you need to think about like what you're gonna put into the the letter of intent. You need to think about like, uh, how will your project impact the SRS? Does it address a very important problem from SRS point of view, from the patient point of view, from your practice point of view? And if you apply for a specific grant category, you need to think about like, is a project uh, really innovative and does it fit actually the requirement of the category? If you're invited to submit a full full application, then you have like 10 page. uh, And the grading criteria is once again, what is the impact of your research? Uh, Is uh, the project uh, uh, innovative? What is the approach? And uh, uh, grading uh, regarding the, the team. So the different category, uh, you have like the standard grant. Standard grant is really like if you have an established research uh, uh, team, you know, if you have already like some, some publication and some, uh, some uh, uh, record, uh, uh, then that would be like the, the, the typical category. This is basically like our biggest grant up to 75,000 uh, over, over two years. And, but this is also the most competitive. Like last year, we had like 28 applications. 
and 50% uh, of them were invited for a full application. The second category is a new investigator. So if you're a young, uh, young member, by young mean less than 10 years of practice, this is your category. So we designed this category to really like promote people that want to do a career in, uh, in uh, deformity research, in addition of being a clinician, of course. Uh, this category, like you can uh, request a grant up to $30,000. And what we realized, like uh, uh, based on the, on, the, on the review from the previous year, is that very often uh, uh, people that apply under the new investigator, the letter of intent are not, let me uh, find the right word, are, are suboptimal. So really don't hesitate when you write your first letter of intent to seek some help. Seek some help from your institution. You can reach out to the, to the SRS like if you have some question because this is really like a, a category where um, we, we have some room. We have some room in the sense that we are, are going to, to fund at least like two new investigator uh, application a year and we don't have that many applicants. The two last category when you come to the two-step process are on one hand like the Bidarma Innovation. So as per the title, this grant is designed for innovative research. It is specifically designed for a young SRS member. And the final category is the SRS cultural uh, grant. So this is uh, specifically for pediatric scoliosis, whether you're doing some molecular research, some mechanical, uh, medical imaging, uh, biomechanical. So this is a, a category that is supported both by the SRS and the Cotrell Foundation. Now I want to switch uh, uh, and spend a little bit more time about like the one-step grant. So one-step grant means that there is no letter of intent. Right away, you submit your application. We actually have two categories. The first one is the resident fellow grant. And the last one is what we call the micro grant. So the practical information, like for both of those categories, like you need to have a SRS member that is at least a co-PI. So what does it mean? It means that if you're not yet an SRS member, you can still apply as long as one of your co is a member. Uh, the funds are for work to be performed or in progress. Uh, and the application, again, it's a very short application, just a two-page application, where you need to think about what is the impact on the SRS mission, what is the impact of your grant application on your career, on your specialty. So the resident fellow grant is up to $10,000 for a duration of, of one year. And, and really like this is more around like a clinical, clinical project. We, we, uh, we fund about like three uh, grant application uh, a year. You can see like this is a, the funded application over the past two years. So uh, some time is to fund uh, a full retrospective study. You know, obviously, if you get a 10,000 grant, you're not going to be able like, to design a fancy multi-center uh, uh, grant. You know, this is not going to be enough money, but that's totally fine. Like the SRS, uh, uh, there is no, nothing that prevents you to get some funding from, let's say, your institution uh, uh, and in addition, get some funding from the SRS. So think about this, this as some seed money for, for a project that you really want to perform. And the final category, you know, it's, it's actually a funny category. That's uh, anything that doesn't fit in the other category, you can apply for a micro grant. So micro grant, you know, is just $2,500, but you can do whatever you want with it. So we want uh, this category really to promote diversity. So if you don't, your institution doesn't have a long history of, uh, of a research grant application, Maybe start with a, a micro grant. Uh, uh, you can apply. This doesn't have to be a clinical project. So it can be like to travel uh, uh, to do some observation. It can be to support a resident or a student. It can be to to do anything that you want. So you know we we uh, and that's actually in the guideline. In the guideline, we say like think outside the box. So let's say that you want to design a prototype and then apply for a bigger uh, grant. Maybe go for a micro grant. Let's say that like, you design a fancy uh, uh, formula and you want to make sure that every SRS member has access to this formula. Maybe you need a little bit of funding from a, a website. Well, go for a micro grant. 
Maybe you want to train your resident on some cadaver and fancy the adult model deformity or pediatric deformity technique. That could be it. That could be uh, an option. And so this is like uh, um, the category where we receive the less amount of uh, application. So last year, we only had like two applications. Both of them were funded, but we really like to fund like a, at least like four category for, for micro grant. Uh, my final advice is like, start your grant application as soon as possible. Uh, uh, and go online, read the guideline, and then go on the uh, online portal. Just pretend to submit your, your, your grant. You pretend to submit and you check all the category. You check like all the section that you need and what is the length allocated. Because sometimes like you didn't realize that you need an additional abstract in lay term or in technical term. And what happened is that people didn't think about this. So they copy past from another uh, uh, section of the grant. And as a reviewer, we're reading like three times the, three times like the same uh, sentence. So start early and think about like what is the impact of your project, of your application, for the SRS and for yourself, for your career and your specialty. Keep in mind like the SRS mission sta statement and a research uh, mission. And you know, if it was a, if I was not clear today, you can always go on the on the website, on the professional side of the SRS website, and everything is very clearly explained. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lafage. That was filled with many gold nuggets, but lots of very good information for everyone. Um, the Scoliosis Research Society is a nonprofit professional organization made up of physicians and allied health personnel. Their primary focus is on providing continuing medical education for healthcare professionals and on funding and supporting research in spinal deformities. Please visit srs.org for further information.